My name is Laramie Miller. Some of you guys might recognize me as Sasquatch the Mountain Man, previously on the Outdoor Channel. I'm a hunter, I'm a fisherman, I'm an outdoorsman, I'm a survivalist, but most of all, I am a modern day mountain man. It's bred into me. I got a long lineage, and they've all grew up in the mountains, living off the land. I'm just fortunate to be able to follow in their footsteps. The whole reason I do what I do is because my uncle, before I was ever around, decided he was gonna start filming his adventures in the mountains. And he used to produce VHS tapes that sold in Walmart back in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. Tragically, he actually passed away in a plane crash in 95, him and his younger brother scouting for help. But he was doing what he loved. And you'll ask my mom, and I drove her and my sisters crazy because I'd run around the house bugling like an elk all the time. I remember the time I was just a little kid and dreaming about being on a horse in the mountains. You know, Sasquatch Mountain Man, there was a lot of great adventures. You know, there was eight seasons of pure wilderness, backcountry, survival, mountain man stuff. But what's next? Well, I'm here to tell you. Laramie Sasquatch Miller is a throwback champ from another era, a creature of the past. This hunter, father, figure of the West, is a man of the mountains with a calling to fulfill. Join him on the trail. mountain men have kind of become a lost historical high point of our country's founding. They were the ones that opened up this country. You think about that back in the day. You think of how tough they had to be. I wish I could go back and just test myself, see where I would stack up. I'm not saying I could do it, but I'd love to give it a try. So this right here, this is seven. I just picked him up. He's young, he's only five years old, but he's got a good personality, easy going. What? You look in a horse's eyes and you can tell a lot. Kind of like looking in a person's eyes. If they got real shifty eyes, you might not want to trust them. But me and Seven are gonna learn a lot of stuff over the next month. <laughs> he's gonna come out a completely different horse and I might come out a completely different person. You know, most people look at this and think, well, he's got a horse that's gonna make things easier. Well, no, it's actually not, it makes things harder. You know, the mountain men back in the day, they relied on their horse because it was their lifeline, but you're not only looking out for your safety, you're looking out for the horse too, because if you don't have the horse, then you don't make it out. You know, not only do I have to fend for myself and get food for myself, I gotta make sure he's got food, I gotta make sure he's got water, I gotta make sure he don't get eaten by wolves. <laughs> I don't have a gun. But we'll do all right, huh, buddy? Huh, buddy? I've been thinking about this trip for a long time. And I've been trying to keep myself mentally and physically in a good position because it's going to be tough. You know, I've been hiking the mountains, trying to stay in shape, researching, doing a little smoothing up my edibles game, I'm ready. You know, that's the one thing about the mountains. It's like Murphy's Law. If something can go wrong, it will go wrong. But the preparation beforehand is the difference between living or dying in a survival situation. So, you just wanna make sure you cover your bases. And even if your bases aren't covered, you know what to do when something does go wrong. You know, the goal for this, for me, is to test myself and hone my skills and put myself in that mountain man 200 year ago mind frame. You know, I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna travel down the trail with my horse just like the mountain men did. I'm gonna cover country, I'm gonna build shelters, I'm gonna catch fish, all primitively. 
And that is how I'm gonna sustain myself over the next month or more. This right here. Travel a lot of miles with this old longbow. You know, my string's still in good shape. That could be a nightmare if you cut or bust your string. Luckily, I know how to build another one. I'm gonna be counting on these guys right here for substance. If I can take down a big game animal, I'll be golden, especially a bear. The fat content or an elk will come out fat and sassy. If that doesn't apply true, well, that's yet to be determined. You know, a hatchet is so key in so many ways. I mean, I'm gonna be splitting wood, cutting branches, building shelters, hammering stuff with it. I might throw it at a bear if he comes in. You know, it'd be safety precautions. I'm gonna use this thing for a lot of different uses. It's gonna be my main all around tool. You know, and then I always have, if you look, I always have knives on my head. I don't go anywhere without a couple of knives. I wouldn't be able to do what I do and spend the time. I have a very loving, caring family. You know, I have three beautiful kids, a beautiful fiance that supports me and all my craziness. <laughs> I'm a lucky man. Living with Laramie is interesting. I mean, you come home to a rattlesnake skin in the freezer or I mean, the things you find laying around are probably the most surreal that kind of snaps me back to, wow, okay, this is my life when you come downstairs to buckskins laying on the counter, just things I never thought would be there. My least favorite part about living in the mountains. I've gotten a lot better because before I would have just called Laramie. I mean, I'm a mountain girl now. I can kill she spiders. She's changed so much because before, when we first moved in there, she would just scream because there's a little bitty black spider or something. She would scream, ah, Larry! Now she just steps on it. I, like last night, she comes up, she tells me, she says, I killed this giant bug in the sink. It's like, I think it's the one that was flying around. It's like this big. Good job, babe. Before she would have screamed and ran out of there. And... She's turning into a mountain girl. I'm getting her trained up. She's turning into a mountain girl, slowly but surely. I think I got it. I can't see it. It's like it it went under. Did I get it? Oh, I see its guts. I can do hard things. <laughs> we just had our first baby, um, baby girl Faye. She's going to turn six months um, while Laramie's gone. Yeah, Mrs. Selfie on the mountain. Hey, this is my life right here. This is what I deal with all the time. Me, I barely know how to use a phone. Her, she's over here, Miss Selfie, and, but I'm thankful for it because she does all my social media because if it was left up to me, there would be none. Hey, Daddy's just lucky in general, huh? He's lucky to have us. The hardest part of this whole thing for me is gonna be leaving my family behind because my family means the world to me and I love showing them and teaching them what I've been fortunate enough to learn at a very young age. So that's gonna be hard. What is it? I really don't think they, they don't make them like Laramie anymore. And I think that Faye is the luckiest girl in the world to have him as her father. Now, don't get me wrong. My family is my world. That's why I do what I do. But I can't change who I am. I'm still a mountain man, and I got to be out there in the high lonesome. I mean, as hard as it's going to be, and I didn't love the idea at first, I did fall in love with a mountain man. So who am I to stop him from being who he is? Can you say hi, Daddy? Say goodbye. Say hi.
imagine? My entire life, I've always wondered, what was it like to be a mountain man, to come into this country with nothing and survive off the land, just you and Mother Nature? Well, guess what? I'm about to find out. So I'm starting right here, and I'm going a long ways. Get picked up way over on the other side, way down the mountain. I'm gonna camp where I see fit. I'm gonna live like the mountain man. I'm just gonna fly by the seat of my pants and wherever the wind takes me, guess what? That's where I'm going. I'm out here for 30 days. A long time. But hey, I'm gonna be in the high lonesome, chasing critters, Hopefully living my best life. Hopefully I'm not starving and miserable. We'll see what the weather has to bring. We will get snow. But what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Laramie Miller and his horse Seven ride into the Rocky Mountains of Western Montana to hunt and gather food, construct shelter, and survive whatever situation Mother Nature intends seeking just enough necessities to sustain both the body and the mind. So I rode up the trail here all a few miles. I decided I better start looking for camp. So I came on this creek right here, which would be a great water source. And then from there, just gonna find a good place that has some shelter, has some food for seven, maybe the possibility of game. That creek gives me fish, hopefully. All right, come on. This right here is what made mountain men, mountain men. If you look right down there, they're a nice little beaver pond. That is why most of the mountain men came to the mountains was to chase brown gold, beaver flues. And it was very short lived because then silk came in and people didn't want beaver, hide, beaver hats anymore. Beaver plues, or belts, were the driving force that sent many fur traders and mountain men west in search of the brown gold. They became the first major explorers of North America and ultimately American Western expansion. In addition to the economic benefits of the fur trade, mountain men were a major factor in determining the boundaries of the United States and especially the Pacific Northwest. Fur traders not only discovered the Oregon and California trails, they provided the guides for America's western expansion to the far blue waters. But man, it would have been an amazing time. Pretty cool. I'm out here just working along the edge of this creek, seeing what kind of sign I can see, see if I can find any edibles. So, I went and walked all over Tarnation looking for mushrooms and grasshoppers. Dug a little bit for worms. This whole basin is just sand. So probably not gonna be very many worms. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some old Seven's hair, his uh, tail hair, and I'm gonna make me a couple of homemade flies. See if I can't catch some of them fish. Not professional, but hopefully it'll do. All right, I've been trying to fish with a fly. Homemade fly hasn't worked. So I'm gonna try a spinner. I've got this hook, if you look right there. Got that hook. And then I found old tobacco lid in my saddlebags. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut just a little seashell, seashell shaped piece out of this lid because it's shiny. And then I'm gonna thread it through that hook. Yeah, so there you go. And hopefully that spins around and acts like a dying minnow. One way or another, I have to figure these fish out because from the looks of it without fish, this area doesn't offer a whole lot more. Didn't find much on day one, but got a good lay of the land. But first thing in the morning, I'm gonna have to start focusing on food because I have none. <laughs> all in all, it was a good first day. But I am Tucker out. Water's frozen in my cup. First night, <laughs> gonna have to take some precautions. Didn't think it was gonna get quite that cold last night. I slept fine. But old seven woke me up about four o'clock this morning, I think, because I think he was cold. Being the nice guy I was, I just curled up in my sleep and <laughs> went back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> this afternoon I've been planning on making a shelter I got a feeling we might get some weather tonight so I'm going to build a little just lean to just enough to keep the rain off me I'm not going to do anything extravagant but I better get to it I'll put four rails along the middle that will act as rafters and then I'll cut a bunch of pine brows and lay those, stack those on top. And then I'm gonna run probably three more off the back. And then I can put pine brows on that so I have a little storage area back there and then I can sleep right here without getting drenched. I mean, a little bit's still gonna come through, but I don't mind a little bit. Something like this, if I took another two hours, I mean, I can make that a pretty good little living area. But I got food on my mind too, so I got me enough shelter to where I'm, I'll be good for a week or more here. I need to go find me some food. started. Almost skin me this squirrel. I got a couple mushrooms and I'm gonna throw it in a soup. I'm gonna throw the whole squirrel in there. I'm gonna take the guts out. I'm gonna use the guts for fish bait and then eat the whole squirrel. I'm just gonna boil it, make it like a stew slash soup with a couple of mushrooms I have and call it good. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. Mm. I'm going to put this up in a safe spot. Hopefully, Mr. Bear doesn't come by think it's his dinner. All right, folks. See you tomorrow. I don't know if you can hear that, but not very far. Wolves. I'm not the only predator. Oh boy. That sounds like a pretty big pack too. <sighs> Might have to start flinging some arrows at wolves. They're getting closer and closer. That's a pretty good sized pack.
It's one of the most beautiful slash eerie things you'll ever hear in the woods is a pack of wolves. And them wolves weren't 200 yards through the timber right there. They were howling at me because I know I'm here. Pretty crazy. Gotta love it, though. That's what it's all about. So I don't know if you can hear that, but not very far. Wolves. I'm not the only predator. Oh boy. That sounds like a pretty big pack too. That's fun. <laughs> now, wolves don't scare me at all, personally. But I don't want to leave this horse tied up here. And that's like free game for a pack of wolves to come in. So I don't want to stray too far from camp just to protect him. Sasquatch Miller is a throwback champ from another era, a creature of the past. This hunter, father, figure of the West, is a man of the mountains with a calling to fulfill. Join him on the trail. He's just tense. I don't like the smell of them wolves, and you don't like the sound of them. You're all right. You just rub them down, and a lot of times they'll just calm down. Huh. Huh. People are gonna ask me, well, why in the heck did you choose a green horse? Well, for one, he was the best option available. I uh, used to have an outfitting business, had a bunch of horses. I've ridden horses and had horses my entire life while well, I had to get rid of them. And then I'm starting to collect another herd. And he just, Seven here is, he doesn't have a spooky bone in his body. He's not spooky to where he's gonna blow up and leave you out there. He's a little skittish just because he's green and doesn't know. But by the time he gets out of here, he's gonna be a completely different horse. He's uh, He's got all the makings to be a great saddle mount. He just needs riding and that's what this trip is gonna <laughs> provide him. I'll probably ride him over 100 miles at least, easy, throughout this trip, so. That's some good work for all seven. Huh, buddy? You know, it's uh, not as cold this morning because we got overcast. Feels like rain. I'm guessing we're going to have rain here off and on throughout the day from the looks of it. It's pretty socked in. If that's the case, and I'm gonna be hanging out, I might add a little more to my shelter to make it a little more waterproof. And I'll have to, uh, you know, I'll do a little fishing, but I won't be able to be out in the rain too much because the last thing I want is to be soaking wet. So, that's the plan for today. 
not go very far from camp. Look at that. Shoulder bone off of an elk. I can use it for something. Might use it for a shovel. Never know. Still trying to find worms or grasshoppers or something. I think I'm gonna have a little better luck fishing if I can find some worms. You know, there's this ground is so sandy that it's gonna be tough, but there's a couple spots along the edge of this creek that there should be worms there. And especially we got moisture, and whenever you get moisture, worms come to the surface. So hopefully today the worms are closer to the surface and I can get lucky. Let's go check it out. So if you look right here. I got this area where I had seven and it's really wet and you can see brown dirt, not as much sand. I brought my paddle along. Look, got my paddle. I'm just gonna start digging a hole right there and see if I can't find a worm or two or three or four or as many as I can because right now my main source of food is fish. Oh. There should be some worms somewhere in here. Yeah. Little guy. I don't have anything to hold my worms right now, so they're gonna go in my hat. Oh, look at the size of that one. Oh, look at that. That right there, I mean, I can literally one, two, three. That could potentially be four fish for me right there. That's a huge find. If I can find three or four more like that. <clears throat> oh, oh, oh. Another one. You got some little bitty ones, and then there's actually, usually you don't find big night crawlers up this high, but guess what? We are. Now this is what I'm talking about. You look, that right there makes my day. I mean, that's a lot of fishing I can get done right there. And you know what, if all else fails, I'm gonna have warm pretzels. So there you go. So, I'm gonna take all these worms out of my hat. I don't want worms growing into my head. I just need to figure out a way. What can I make to hold my worms? 
know what I'm gonna do? Got an old sock. I just fill it full of some dirt. Throw them worms in there. Should be good to go. And that right there is my stinky worm pouch. Just hope I'm not delirious one morning and try to slip that sock on. <laughs> A new day is underway as Laramie pursues the skittish mountain trout again, now armed with fresh worms for bait. It's time to go fishing. I've had enough of these squirrels. I'm gonna go try my luck with some fish. The sun's out a little bit. It's warming up just a little bit. Hopefully they're biting. They weren't biting this morning. Got him. Got him. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Look at that. Yeah, buddy. Oh. <laughs> There's one down. I'm going to try to catch four or five today so I have a little stockpile. Oh, I see a willow. Oh, it's nice and swampy. So you look, got these willows. I'm just gonna cut one. And I'll just take it, peel all these off. There's my stringer. Let's go catch some more. Many of the fish swimming in the clear streams and lakes of the Rocky Mountains are not originally from the area. According to the National Park Service, between 1886 and 1968, nearly 20 million non-native fish, mostly brown, rainbow, and brook trout, had been introduced to these cold waters, joining the native cutthroat and bull trout. I saw some more fish swimming right here. There's a pretty deep little hole right here. I'm gonna sneak up to it. fun fishing today, actually. The past few days has been not so much fun. I like fishing when you catch. And it goes in my belly. Just like the early pioneers who headed west, mountain men chores include keeping a fire, fetching water, livestock care, making bread, maintaining guidebooks and maps, tool work and repairs, hunting and fishing, just to survive. Once I get the fish cooked, I got this boiling water here. I'm gonna make me a little stew. And I'm gonna mix the fish in there after they're cooked. I might eat one. Put the other two in there with a couple of mushrooms I found, some of that watercress I found. Make a little stew. And that way I can drink that broth. I want you to see what this looks like. Look at that. It'll boil for about five, 10 minutes. I'm gonna pull that off and let it cool because I'm gonna have to eat with my fingers because I don't have any utensils. You know what I should do? I lied, I'm gonna make me a spoon while that boils. So I gotta split real thin. You can see, 
From the sharpening of stones to hand axes, from the emergence of flint and cutting utensils, to the more defined blades and chisels, primitive tool making has always been a part of mountain life. Here's the start of my spoon. I should have cut it a little longer because that's kind of a short spoon, but hey, I'll make another one. Just keep crafting on this spoon the whole time I'm out here. By the time it gets done, it'll look good. But for now, I think it's good enough for me to eat with. Here's my start of a spoon. I'll keep working on it, but I'm hungry right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. That's Sasquatch's wilderness stew. energy to go another day. I'd go a lot longer than that if I need to, but I don't really want to. It's been an eventful day. I am whooped. I'm just getting settled in. I ate my fish and Cut all that wood, and now I'm just kind of getting settled in, ready for bed. Seven don't like where I put him tonight. He's antsy. Hopefully, it's an uneventful night. I can get some rest. Oh, well, you look at that. Right to camp. Boy, I wish I could hunt him. Be nice to have a tag for him. Be a lot of vittles. See, if I was a real mountain man back in the day, I'd have my meat for the winter right there. He walked about 15 yards from camp. I was just getting ready to climb into bed. It's dark enough to where you can't really see. This little night vision on this little camera is pretty cool, though. Old Seven wasn't too sure what to think about him, though. He started blowing. And I thought, oh boy, here we go. We got a bear or wolf in camp or something. is out of here. It's just bull. Oh, quit. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, will you look at that? Right through camp. Boy, I wish I could hunt him. Be nice to have a tag for him. Be a lot of vittles. See, if I was a real mountain man back in the day, I'd have my meat for the winter right there. 
He walked about 15 yards from camp. I was just getting ready to climb into bed. And it's dark enough to where you can't really see. This little night vision on this little camera is pretty cool, though. Old Seven wasn't too sure what to think about him, though. He started blowing. And I thought, oh, boy, here we go. We got a bear or wolf in camp or something. Sasquatch Miller is a throwback champ from another era, a creature of the past. This hunter, father, figure of the West, is a man of the mountains with a calling to fulfill. Join him on the trail. After dealing with wolves and no opportunity at big game, Laramie and his young horse, Seven, decide it's time to head down the trail in hopes of finding a critter bigger than a squirrel for sustenance. Well, everybody, today is the day. I'm heading on down the trail. Roll my bag up, pack a couple of things I do have. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm ready to see new scenery and I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting a little tired of fish. I'd like a big old elk or deer steak. That'd be amazing. I think I got, I don't know exactly how far, between eight and 12 miles. I'm gonna go today. So, better get a move on. My next camp spot, I'm gonna try to find something with a little better shelter area because getting closer and closer to snow. Once it starts snowing, I'm gonna need that shelter. Got a lot to look for today. Otis is back. I don't wanna kill him, that's my buddy Otis. He's my camp buddy, he's kinda of camera shy. But he comes in around all the time. I thought about setting a deadfall trap for him, but there's not enough there for me yet. I'm not starving. I've got plenty of fish. And he's kind of a cute little feller. Old Odie. <laughs> Pretty cool. Well, Seven, you ready for this? I've been doing most of the work up till now. Now it's your turn. You gotta carry my big butt and all my gear. And we got a pretty good trip to make. Oh, quit eating willows. Come over here. Get some water. You don't want water? Fine. You lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Thankfully, he can drink anywhere. My plan is I'm just gonna take off up the trail, see how far I get. I'm supposed to meet the guys at a checkpoint. I think it's today. I'm kind of losing track of days, not 100% sure, but I'm pretty positive it's today. Be interesting seeing people again though. Now if it was my baby girl and Katarina, that'd be a different story. I'd be excited to go to the checkpoint, but I could take it or leave it. You about ready, buddy? I'm anxious to get on the trail. Let's go. Well, folks, that about does it for this camp. It's all packed up. Seven's all ready to go. Imagine taking the ultimate journey. Just you and an unproven mammal blazing your own trail. The wildness, the danger, the possibilities. Searching for the familiar 
amongst the unknown. Finding your inner self, alone, but not lost. At home, amid the rugged landscape and elements. Comfortable solidarity, embracing your legacy. The teachings of the mountain offer more than just survival lessons. Learning to live while alive, in the present, a living, breathing, lifelong test. Hello, everybody. We're riding through this real thick stuff like this, and there are wolf tracks everywhere. Wolf Seven here, he can smell them, and he doesn't like it. He's been acting up. He keeps wanting to turn around and go back. And then, of course, we come to these bogs. Man, these, these little creek crossings, he really does not like. So I'm, a couple of them he's walked across, but I'm having to get off. Lead him across, he jumps. It'll take forever to get to my next camp spot. I guess that's what I get for bringing a green horse, huh? We'll get her figured out. We'll get it figured out. But the wolves, I mean, the wolf track is bigger than his track. It's a big old alpha that's in here. Well, there's a big pack, but the alpha is the one that I'm seeing the most of. So, stay tuned, you never know. You might get bucked off because the wolves come in. Hopefully there's not too many more of these little creek crossings like this where it's all grass you can't see. So he's scared. It's just uncomfortable young horse. We'll work through it together. Huh, buddy? Together. Together, man and beast have long traversed through rough country. While mountain men found mules to be sure-footed and better pack animals, the faster horses were preferred for distances hunts, and warfare. Boy, some beautiful country, though. Even though it is about 20 degrees and blowing snow sideways. Come on. We came from way down there in the bottom. You can see the meadow. Way, that's as far as you'll zoom. Way down there. Now we're way up here. Pretty cool. And look, some steep stuff. Four Seven's getting his workout in. Way down there. So I just heard an elk bugle right down here. I called a couple of times. I tied Seven up. He needs a rest anyway. I'm gonna sneak off over here and see if I can't see what's calling back at me. Maybe I can get lucky getting out killed. Oh man, make my life so much easier. where we were, that meadow right there. The meadow right there, that's where camp one was. Now I'm up here on top. I thought I heard an elk people. It might've just been the squeak in the trees, but that's all right, seven needed rest anyway. He's pretty tired. I mean, we climbed up probably. I don't know, 2,500 feet in elevation, 2,000 feet, something like that. And we've gone about seven, eight miles. But that's where the wolves are, and we're going that way. 
I'm getting hungry. I haven't eaten anything all day, so. I need to get to my next camp spot and get set up. And hopefully there's food. You can't tell I'm leaning way back trying to make it easier on him so all the weight's not right over his head. Some steep stuff. You want a break? Yeah, well, me too. Break time. We've made it a long way. Seven is a tired feller. Starting to misstep a little bit, so I figured I'd get off and walk with him for a while. I keep calling down in these canyons. I'm starting to see fresher elk sign, but I keep calling down in these canyons. And haven't heard anything yet. Decided to give Seven a break from my big butt on his back. Do a little of the hiking myself. Plus, this is pretty steep, and him getting tired, I don't want him to have a misstep, and then I go down with him. So, got about a mile more, probably, for a rendezvous point. Meet up with the boys. Well, we just climbed up from, I don't know, about 300 feet down there. I hiked it because Seven's getting tired. I'm pretty much to the top, so I'm gonna jump back on him and right off the backside of this should be checkpoint. <sighs> Hiking when you don't have anything in your belly is fun. comes a serious snow. <laughs> Better hurry and find camp because find a camp spot. If I don't make it to those guys here in the next mile, I gotta find some sort of shelter because boy there's snow coming in. I hope you thoroughly enjoy going back to your warm hacienda because I am going to be sleeping right under that tree. How long can you go without eating? Me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Goodness. This is my setup for tonight because I got to keep moving. This isn't my shelter for number two. This is uh, just an in-between spot. I got to keep making tracks tomorrow. I got to make it another probably eight to 10 miles is what I want to make it to get away from those wolves. I went about 12 miles today through some steep, nasty stuff. 
now I'm just going to sleep under the stars. Get my little bedroll set up. And uh, hopefully I get some sleep and it doesn't snow too much because it looks pretty socked in. I could wake up with four or five inches of snow, maybe more. I don't want to get snowed in up here. <laughs> oh boy. I'm going to get all tucked into bed and I'll talk to you in a minute. I'm whooped. Haven't eaten all day. Had to hike up that mountain because 407 couldn't carry me no more. I'm going to bed. The snow, as you can see, what's well, already on my bedroll. I don't have the energy or the time to make any kind of shelter. I'm kind of tucked up underneath this tree and got a little bit of windbreak right there for me. You can see. Yeah. Hopefully I don't turn into an icicle in the morning. A squatch sickle. It was good seeing the boys for a minute, but I'm ready to get on down the trail. You know, that whole ride today, I was looking, looking, never really saw any fresh, fresh elk or deer. I'm up a little too high for whitetail. You know, maybe I need to move down the mountain a little bit. If the snow keeps up, I'm gonna have to. We'll see. I'm gonna sleep on it and figure out what I wanna do. See you guys in the morning. If I don't freeze to death. last night <laughs> not much wind blew pretty good I was up and down a little bit didn't sleep real good but got good enough sleep it's about seven o'clock sun's so just starting to come up and I don't want to get out of my bed because it's cold oh <sighs> Sasquatch Miller is a throwback champ from another era, a creature of the past. This hunter, father, figure of the West, is a man of the mountains with a calling to fulfill. Join him on the trail. He got himself tangled up. He must have been tangled up for a solid couple minutes before I woke up and heard him this morning. So just <clears throat> when I thought it was bad and we had all the snow and I'm wanting to get down the mountain, and this happens. It's gonna postpone me at least a couple of days. I'm gonna have to stay here with him. I'll get his leg wrapped real good. Try to get some of that swelling out, get some blue coat on his leg to try to get those cuts to start healing quick. Luckily, it's cold, it works like ice. Look at it, it's, could be worse, he could have broke his leg, but. And it's tender to him. Luckily, horses heal pretty fast, but. Yep, that puts my plans. Seven. I'm sorry, buddy. Remember at the very beginning when I said it was harder with a horse? It is. Now I gotta worry about him. I can't just head down the mountain. I gotta figure things out.
So I got some of this cut heel stuff that'll, you might not like it at first, might sting a little bit. Hey. I know, I know it stings, buddy. Oh. I got some gauze. This is mainly, it's cold enough, I don't think it'll get infected, but it's mainly to keep it from getting infected. Keep dirt and whatever else from getting in it. He's not quite sure about it, look at him. But I'll probably have to change it again tomorrow and do the same thing and hopefully that helps. I'm just thankful he didn't break it because I've had horses that get caught up like that, just not used to being on whether it's a high line or staked out or whatever it is. You know, they get caught like that and wind up actually breaking a leg or something like that. So I'm thankful he didn't do that. You can tell he's cold, look, he's shivering. It's probably 20 degrees. It got down around zero last night. It's probably only 20 degrees right now. But honestly, that's gonna help that wound so it won't fester. Hopefully it doesn't get infected. Hopefully he heals quick, so time will tell. We're stuck here till he does. Seven's alpine inexperience finally shows, presenting an unexpected setback for Laramie, holding him in the high lonesome, delaying a return to the trail. Well, I'm seeing how I'm going to have to stay here another night. I think I'm gonna make me just a makeshift lean-to right here, just a quick one. That uh, enough for me to get out of the weather tonight. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie a log to there, to that tree, and then just make it slant back. And that way, I have something because the wind predominantly is either going to come out of the south or it's going to come through this canyon right here. So that way I can at least be out of the weather a little bit in case it really snows tonight and I don't wake up with a foot of snow on top of my sleeping bag. I'm going to sit here and get a little bit more energy and then I'm going to do that. I need to cut more firewood. Lots more firewood. to there and then I've got this one down here tied like so now I'm gonna cut three yeah three should do it three logs that'll go from there to there and then lay branches on top of it it'll at least keep the weather off me for the most part So now what I'll do is I'll just take branches, lay them along that top all the way to the bottom. And 
There's my hatchet. Under snow somewhere, probably. What do you think, folks? Think it'll do? I think it's gonna keep me, I'm gonna fill that little hole in back there in the back and I think it'll keep me plenty dry. At least drier than last night. Woke up with an inch of snow on my bedroll. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna do for food today. Big guy's hungry. <sighs> Still melting snow. Then you look up. I sleep tucked up next to that log tonight. You know, really, I didn't get that much snow on me compared to you walk right out there and there's three three and a half inches. Well, there's maybe a dusting of an inch where I slept last night, and hopefully that lean-to will catch the rest of it that I didn't, that the tree didn't catch. Wasn't planning on staying here longer than one night. But better to be smart than wind up in trouble. Still got a lot of time left here. If I get hurt now, guess what? I might not make it out of here. Well, folks, that's all I got for now. It's cold, snowy, I'm hungry. Not the best of conditions, but guess what? My attitude's still good, so. That's half the battle right there. Well, it's only been a few days since Laramie's been gone, but it already feels like a month. And it's just weird waking up feeding her, making myself breakfast. And you can't help but wonder, like, what is he eating? Is he, has he even eaten yet? Has he gotten anything? And you almost feel kind of guilty. You know, he could be out there eating worms. I know he planned on eating grubs. I don't feel like I'd survive out there because I don't know if I could eat a grub. <laughs> I hope he's all right. I hope he's not too hungry. I hope he's got a good shelter by now. I hope he's warm. So I bundled up Munchkin and we went for a hike. We always take Kimber as our bodyguard. We don't go too far away from the house without Laramie. <laughs> and hiking these trails, you know, I can't help but wonder what is he up to right now? How far has he gotten? Has it been easy? Is there more snow because he's higher up? which makes me worry because I don't know how great his shelter is or if this is a travel day. I'm not gonna lie, we are both worried sick about him right now. There's no water, I have no food. Need to figure out something there. 
I can make it another day without food if I have to, but I don't really want to. But in a snowstorm like this, you don't really have a choice. It takes all your energy just to stay warm. You go out and start wasting a bunch of energy doing nonsense, then you really get in a pickle. So I'm just gonna keep gathering some of the snow out here outside the trees. There's probably two and a half inches already. Coming down. Who knows, my, the way it's set in might have a foot by the time this is all said and done. That wouldn't be good. At least I can still move in a foot though. Oh, winter wonderland. Seven says this is nonsense. I'm gonna, <laughs> I agree, I agree. This has been the story of my last day and a half, is I have literally done nothing but cut firewood and melt snow for water for both me and Seven. And it's gonna have to happen for the next couple days until he gets better. At this altitude, the mountain's behavior often dictates what becomes essential. I mean, I'm having to, luckily this is half full of water already. But I'm having to melt it at least two, sometimes three times before I have enough for one pot. And seven will drink three to four pots at one time. Now the amount of firewood that I'm using because I'm having to constantly melt snow for water is a lot. I literally melt water and I cut firewood and I have about an hour the rest of the day where I'm not doing that to try to find myself food. Today I might just have to take a couple, two or three hours and go try to hunt because I need food. You know, in situations like this where don't have a ton of energy to go hunt a bunch. Setting traps and snares and stuff like that is unbelievable because they're working while you rest. You know, legally I can't set snares and I can't set any traps yet, but that would make my life so much easier. You know, there's not much I could set some deadfalls for mice and stuff like that, but I'm gonna wait until I get to my other camps and I'll set those there. But like for these squirrels, because squirrels are very habitual. Same thing with those rabbits. You know, if I could go set snares where those rabbits are running, because I can see with the snow today, that's a great, so great way to catch food because you're not having to ex spend a bunch of energy hunting, those traps are hunting for you. Like I said, legally, where I'm at, you can't do that. So I'm gonna rely on my hunting skills and pray they pay off. You know, the one nice thing about the snow, too, is you can see where everything's moving. If anything's moving. You now I'm walking through this thick stuff. I'm seeing if I can't scare up a grouse or get a squirrel in a tree or something. I'm exerting quite a bit of energy, so we gotta be careful because. better down in here. Yeah, this has been a doozy of the day, I can tell you that. Make 
see right here where it's been. You can see right here where he's been going back and forth. Come on, buddy. Show yourself. Probably got a nest bur burrowed under the ground right there somewhere. That's the one thing you don't hear about. You know, you haven't had enough calories to keep your body going, is you don't hear about how cold you get. Because Without enough, without that consistent calories, your body can't create that heat. So, hopefully, I can get something to put in my belly and that'll help me sleep tonight, too. Otherwise, it might be a long, miserable night tonight. Because I'm cold right now, and I know it's going to drop another. 10 degrees probably. No fresh meat for the fire. Sparse patches of winter grass appease a mending seven. With white death all around, every decision is the difference between thriving or surviving. It's cold tonight. I mean, it feels like it's in the single digits, but I don't know what it is. All I know is everything's iced up, everything's... not snowing at the moment, so hopefully it stays that way. It'll be cold tonight, but I'd rather it stay that way and not snow, because I can't stay here. I can't keep boiling water for seven and water for me, and gives me no time to find any food. I need to go set up a semi-permanent camp and, yeah, so that I have better shelter, better conditions, It'll give me more energy because I'm not going to have to do all the other things. Give me more energy to go out and hunt and actually go try to find some big game. I'm going to go to bed and wake up in the morning and hope it's a better day. So this is my every morning. I gotta thaw my boots, my pants, even though my pants were under my head. I gotta thaw all that out because the bottom of my pants are frozen. My boots were frozen solid pretty much this morning. My hat, frozen solid. in the process of thawing everything out just so I can get dressed. It's cold. That's why I need to get to my next camp spot and get a, a lot better shelter built to hold in the heat and that way stuff can stay warm and unthawed. I can't stress enough how much I need food right now. Especially with this cold, I hope it's not here to stay. I mean, it's 10 degrees, probably colder. You can see just frozen solid. Still icicles on that one. Hat's starting to warm up a little bit. I'm 
seven looks good. I think I'm gonna be able to head out tomorrow. I'll replace that bandage today. Let him have one more day of rest on it. You know, there's something about this mountain air that heals wounds really fast. You know, it's clean. You don't have the bacteria in it. Laramie Sasquatch Miller is a throwback champ from another era. A creature of the past. This hunter, father, figure of the West, is a man of the mountains with a calling to fulfill. Join him on the trail. How in the hell am I going to stay warmer tonight? Because last night was miserable. I think I could cut some more long brows or something to put right here to shield some more of this wind off and funnel that heat from the fire in that way. Maybe uh, cut some brows for underneath my bed so that I'm not laying right on the cold ground. And like I've said a few times, when you don't eat and you don't have that protein and calorie intake, it's hard for your body to produce warmth and keep you warm. So I'm having to do that in other ways. Maybe if I close in the back underneath back there a little bit, that'll help. And then close this side in. Because I can tell you right now, this isn't good. I wanted to be out of here a long time ago. I knew I was gambling staying up in the high country this long. You know, if I was to judge it on a scale of one to 10, right now I'm at about a seven of bad in a bad situation. And if I don't do something about it, I'm gonna be creeping up on that 10 real quick. So my two things I need to get done today, is I need to figure out this shelter situation and I need to go find some food. As you can tell, the weather hasn't changed much all day. It's been windy, snowy, and bitter cold. You look out across that, it just... It's cold up here. I'm going for one last walk. I'm hoping this clears out tonight and I can leave tomorrow, but I'm going for one last walk. See if I can't find something to put in my belly. some kind of meat, because I desperately need it. I'm just walking slow, because I don't have the energy I normally do. But sitting at camp by the fire isn't going to give me any more energy. It's just going to not use it. And I'm to the point where I need to find something to give me energy. <laughs> so, let's hope this pays off. Humans can subsist without food for up to two months, if we have enough water. However, scientific facts offer little relief for a hungry man in the cold, high lonesome. Sucker brave as brass. symbol of stability. 
In a land so firm and still, the only constant is the need to survive. Ever on the hunt, Laramie seeks a food source to fuel his body with the energy necessary to function. Starvation eventually leads to death. Tell you what, you'd think these squirrels get hunted all the time. I doubt they've rarely ever seen a person. That little sucker was over there, jumped up in the trees and went from tree to tree to tree to tree to tree, all the way back to his nest and then down his hole. Didn't stop, couldn't get a shot. <sighs> so even when I see him, I can't get close enough or get a good angle for a shot. <sighs> you know, trapping these little suckers would be the easiest thing, little deadfall traps or snares. But guess what? You can't. It's taking more and more energy, more and more effort just to put one foot in front of the other. Two hundred years ago, I'd have been able to set snares and do things a lot different because there weren't any hunting regulations. There weren't trapping regulations. You have to abide by the game laws. They're there for a reason. I just pray I can get something killed tonight. I don't care what it is. <laughs> Red meat will go a long way to giving me energy and helping me get down the trail. All right, everybody, so one more time. I'm gonna try to go look for squirrels. Um, I haven't had any luck yet. I'm hungry, I'm getting dizzy. <sighs> Hopefully. I haven't eaten in three and a half days. Anything. I've had water, a little bit of coffee. I knew I should have grabbed the mushrooms when I was riding over here, but I didn't. <laughs> my own stupidity and my own fault, so. Let's see if I can't find a squirrel. <sighs> you, know, you look at this. You know, I'm just stalking through all this country, but the snow's just deep enough, those squirrels don't want to get out. They're not running up and down logs like normal because the logs are covered in snow like that. So they're staying in the thicker trees for the most part. It makes it tougher for me, but let's see if I can't get lucky. You look right there, there's a little squirrel burrow. You know, they burrow under the ground for the winter. But you can see that's where he's been going in and out, been eating his pine cones and whatnot. They're in here. I just can't seem to see them. this morning took it all out of me. <laughs> I'm about to go rob that squirrel stash. I bet he's got some mushrooms and pine nuts hid out in there. How can you hike through the woods as much as I have and not even see a squirrel? <sighs> squirrel tracks everywhere. No squirrels. Maybe they're nocturnal, I don't know. It's 
squirrel's been digging down in here, getting him probably pine nuts, I'm guessing. You know, every pine cone in the spring, it's got nuts in it, spring and summer. But those nuts, the pine tree will open up and the nuts will fall out. And then squirrels will come, it's all these little holes you see, they're digging for pine nuts. If you can find, you know, this time of year, every once in a while, you can still find pine cones that aren't opened. If they're not opened yet, or if they're green, you can stick them in a fire real slow and they'll open up. You don't want to stick them right in the fire, but warm them up, stick them on the coals. They'll open up and then you can eat the pine nuts out of it. But I'm not finding any pine cones that aren't open or that the squirrels haven't already got. Gorgeous, but brutal. Well, everybody. Praying it's my last night in this camp. You're seven, he's ready to leave too. Praying I can get out of here in the morning. I'm hungry, but I think I got another couple days in me. Maybe I can find something along the trail tomorrow, but I think I got a couple days in me yet to get to lower elevation in my next, my next camp spot. Like I said, I think I'm gonna try to go about 20 miles. It'll probably take me two days. Hopefully the weather holds off and lets me travel. Cross your fingers, nothing happens to seven tonight. I hope the weather holds off. Not gonna lie, the last couple days have been pretty miserable. Bitter, cold, snowing, last three days, I guess. Just bitter cold, snowing, wind blowing, animals not moving, makes it tough. Tough on you mentally as much as anything. I mean, yeah, I haven't eaten and I'm dragging, tired, weak, but the mental aspect is what really gets you. When nothing seems to go right over and over and over again, it just beats you down. Well, guess what? I'm resilient. I'm gonna keep on keeping on and give it the best I got. I don't know if the weather's gonna clear up or not. Hey, look, that's the west, northwest where the weather usually comes out of. Look at how dark them clouds are up there. The last thing I want to do is take off and get caught up on top in a blizzard. The snow's really starting to wear on me. <laughs> I have to move. We'll see. I'm going to give it another hour or so, see what this weather does. And then I'm going to load up and head out. Come on, almighty, throw me a bone, would you? <laughs> I could use one right now. Nice thing about these bedroll covers like this and bedrolls, this is what mountain men used to have, called them ground sheets. And you roll all your excess stuff up in them. You know, so like me, I roll my hatchet and 
clothes and extra jackets, whatever I need, arrows, whatever it is, I can roll right up in this. Resiliency, by definition, is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. To endure alone in this environment requires a toughness that's only earned. To be resilient does not excuse life's dilemmas, but defines the strength needed for its hardships. camping spots, I mean, it grows into home. And you're kind of sad to see it go. I, that was the way with the first spot. I was happy to get away from the wolves, but it was a nice little camp spot. This spot, there's nothing I'm gonna miss. <laughs> Cold, arctic, snowy, no food. I'm ready to get the hell out of here. Time to move on down the trail. Sasquatch Miller is a throwback champ from another era, a creature of the past. This hunter, father, figure of the West, is a man of the mountains with a calling to fulfill. Join him on the trail. Discover what's really going on around you. It's best a man walk before he runs. In charge. Authentic. Without nuance. Initiating a personal sacrifice because its beauty is the reward. Liberating a justice. Your footprints tangible alibis. The mountains witnesses to the journey. Yeah, I'm settling to get some water. When he's done, I'm gonna go ahead and fill my canteen up. I think we're good to go. Seven's leg's doing fine. It's still really slick, kind of sketchy to ride on. I think I'm gonna walk a lot of it. I'll probably only make it six, seven, eight miles today, but go as far as I can. Beautiful country, though. Nice and quiet out here. As a spectral winter scene canvases the shifting landscape, Laramie must remain vigilant to Seven's wounded leg while descending the snowy slopes. You know, it's still bitter cold today. I'm so glad I made the choice to move out of that spot, though, because I've already gone, I don't know, five, six miles from that spot. And getting closer and closer to being able to drop off the mountain, get down in some lower elevation. So even though I haven't eaten in a few days, I'm tired. I'm glad Seven, Seven's not showing any problems with his legs. So I needed a change of scenery. Because mentally I was starting to get down. And when that happens, 
boy, it can snowball quick. I'm excited to see what's over the next ridge, see what's on the next side of the mountain. And I'm headed there. I'm definitely not gonna make it all the way today. I'm gonna have to make a spike camp tonight somewhere. But I'll come to that when it gets there. I got two or three more hours to ride probably. Who knows, I might come across some critters. Laramie's increasing and concerning need for nourishment aside, the wondrous scenery sighted underneath evergreen shadows frame cohesive, compelling views. Man, you look at this country. I came from way over there. Way over there. I started first camp's about 20, 22 miles that way. You just look at how beautiful. I mean, it's cold and rugged, but beautiful country. There's bull elk track from this morning right here. Going that way. Maybe I'll run into him. Oh man, if I could get an elk killed. Stomach's growling just thinking about it, not eating for a few days. Seven says, Dad, I'm tired. You're fat and heavy. Well, guess what? I'm losing weight just for you. I bet I've already lost 10, 12 pounds. That's 10, 12 pounds less you have to carry. He don't agree with me. So, as you can tell, it's getting dark. I found a spot. I'm gonna put seven right there. I'm gonna sleep right here, start a little fire right there. It'll be good for tonight. A rolling stone gathers no moss until it rests just as a mountain stream flows no further than its headwaters allow. Nature's scoreboard dictating the time and place. Well, I've got everything packed up. Doesn't take me long. All I gotta do is saddle seven up and I'll head down the trail. But I think first things first, it's a beautiful morning. I'm gonna go, go for a little walk and see if I can't find something. Squirrel, grouse, Something, something should be moving this morning. So I'm gonna go do that before I jump on seven and head down the trail because my energy is low. I need to eat. It's been way too long. I can feel my body. And you know what happens when you, when you don't have enough protein, your body burns all your fat stores. Well, once it gets done burning those fat stores, then it goes after your muscle. And your heart is a muscle and it'll start eating your organs. Your own body will start eating itself. I don't want that to happen, so I need to find food. I need to get something of substance. So I'm gonna take a little walk and see what I can scrounge up. out through here. There's a ton of fresh deer tracks. Critters are definitely moving this morning. Maybe I can get lucky and run into one. Oh, 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 oh. There's a grouse right there. Grouse, 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 grouse. One just flew off, but there's another one. There's another one. Kind of a long shot. He's right behind that log. Come on, you little sucker. Stick your head up. There he is. There he is. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy 
smokes. I thought I screwed it up because one of the grouse flew off, but there was two of them. Look at that. I shot him right in the head. <laughs> this right here, I could not be more thankful. I'm starving in this right here. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and just rip his head right off. Oh my goodness. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pluck him. I'll eat his heart and his kidneys and stuff. I'll eat that raw right now, but I'm gonna pluck him so that I can eat his skin. Because skin, oh, look at this. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, oh, I can't wait to get this sucker back to the fire. Man, just that little energy it took to walk that and blow on this fire, I'm lightheaded. <laughs> that grouse couldn't have come at a better time. That little dude right there has more nutrients in it. That's the heart. Look at You can just taste, got iron, got all kinds of nutrients. I can't tell you how thankful I am for that grouse. And once I get them coals, I'll lay him right on top of them coals and just let him Simmer. You're probably wondering why I threw the guts and stuff in the fire. Well, bird guts, there's really nothing there. There's some leaves and whatever they've been eating. But all the extra guts that I'm not going to take with me and not use, I throw in the fire and burn just so scent. Keep the bears away. You leave blood out there. That'll attract bears quicker than anything. So there are grizzlies in here. Obviously I saw bear tracks yesterday. So just being cautious. We got the gizzard right here. Boil that up. Liver. Kidneys. Yummy, yummy. Losing my heat. But I do believe that's cooked good enough for me. Man, you just look at that. It looks like a rotisserie chicken you get out of the store. Except for it's gonna taste way more better. Oh my goodness. I just want to savor every bite. You know, if you've never eaten grouse, there's a few different types of grouse up here. You got duskies or blues like this. You've got down in the lower elevation, you have some prairie grouse, but then you have the best eaten, in my opinion, the rough grouse. And it, uh, rough grouse will taste a lot like chicken. These duskies, they have a little more gamey taste to them because, you know, they mainly live in the high country. You know, it's funny how your body adjusts. You know, I haven't eaten for quite a while. 
what, four or five days, and your stomach shrinks. And then you can't eat as much because your body's not used to, you know, having that much in, in it, so it learns to operate on less. You know, I'm 270 pounds, well, it was when I started. I could eat two or three of these at home. There ain't no way I'm gonna finish this right now. Some of that is still raw. I'm gonna let it cook some more while I pack up camp. And then I'll throw that, I'll have me a trail snack. Mm -mm -mm. <sighs> Thank you, man upstairs. Wash it all down with a cup of ca cafecito. I am one happy Sasquatch right now, but I can take a nap. <laughs> with stomachs full and bodies energized, Laramie's mind feels free and his anthem rings clear. A simple yet complex mystery comes together after harvesting a meal that makes us whole. There's no hidden secrets to success in the wild. Observe, learn, adapt, survive. Man, just look down through here. Look how much different the country is. A lot lusher, a lot more food for seven as well as for game. There's gonna be a lot more edibles. Even if I can't find the game, or can't get something killed, I'm still gonna be able to starve slowly with edibles. I think I've made the right decision. But we'll see, I still got another mile or two to go to where I wanna camp. But at least I know this part of the country looks like this. Boy, it's steep. starting to see a lot of edibles. There's juniper berries and knick-knick and Oregon grape. And we're dropping down fast. You can look and see how dry this country is down here compared to where I've been. And this canyon is gonna be my home for the next while. So I made it to where I want to make it to. Now I'm just trying to find a good spot for a semi-permanent shelter, something that I can stay in for a while. You know, something where I've got grass close for seven, water's got to be close, and a nice flat spot where I can build. Hmm, we got a nice little open meadow down here. This might be just perfect. Well, good morning, everybody. Still got pretty cold last night. I mean, cold enough to freeze the coffee I left in there. Beautiful morning, though. Bluebird skies. It's a good day for work. 
I'm gonna go do a little hunting, foraging, walk around, see what I can't find. I mean, look, this is just gonna be a beautiful camp spot. I think I'm gonna put my cabin right there. Just gonna do a little like eight by eight log slanted roof cabin. I like this spot. Laramie Sasquatch Miller is a throwback champ from another era, a creature of the past. This hunter, father, figure of the West, is a man of the mountains with a calling to fulfill. Join him on the trail. And right through here, there are connecting berries everywhere. Look at this. I'm gonna pick me another handful, put them in my pocket, but this is a great, I mean, it's a huge patch right here. There's connecting berries everywhere. Like I said, the Native Americans used to use connecting berries and they'd put them in with their pemmican. as you know, your sugars and, and helps break up the taste of just meat. So I'm gonna grab some. Well, will you look at what I found? That's a big old mushroom. That'll go good in a stew. I'm gonna look around right here because usually where there's one, there's more. Look here, right here. You know, they're getting all shriveled up. They're about done for, but they're, you know, freezing up and starting to die. I'm finding them just at the right time. Right now, I'm gonna start on my shelter. I'm gonna start on my little cabin that I'm gonna build. So if you look right here, I'm gonna dig out an eight by eight square right there. I'm gonna dig all that grass out and then I'll use that grass to put on my roof. But I'm gonna dig all that out and make it somewhat flat. And then I'm gonna have to go cut I'm gonna have to go cut all the logs for it. We've got a lot of work to do. Well, as you can see now, I've got majority of the sod out and it's somewhat flattened off. I need to go cut a bunch of logs. I'll be cutting logs all afternoon, all day, probably into tomorrow. So that's where I'm headed. Need to go find a bunch of logs, cut as many as I can. So if you look, I got all the ground cleared out. My vision, we'll see if it ends up this way is it's gonna be about seven foot tall in the front, about six foot tall in the back. You have four log sides. I'm still debating on whether I'm gonna stack them and then put three braces in each corner or I'm gonna notch them. cabin here is probably going to take me a couple, two or three days. I mean, that's a lot of cutting with a handsaw. I feel like Popeye right now. My right arm wants to fall off.
Well, I'm pretty happy with the progress of the cabin. I got a couple hours here before dark. I'm gonna go try to hunt, see if I can't find a deer or something. I'll work on it some more tomorrow. Hopefully I finish it, I don't know, we'll see. Right now I know that I used a lot of energy and this little grouse dinner that I have for later isn't gonna last very long, so I need to go find some more food. Luckily I found some mushrooms and berries and stuff like that, but I want some more red meat. So I'm gonna go see what I can't find. Working my way up real slow up this bottom. You can see it's kind of thick, but there's a lot of nice grass down in here. I'm just gonna walk a mile or two up this canyon and turn around and go back to camp. Hopefully we can find something. Luckily I got dinner back at camp for tonight, but I could really use some more food especially red meat. I'm finding a lot of forage, so that's a good thing, but I need more red meat. I need big game. But look what I found. A big old bleat. Yeah, buddy. I did have a really good haul of mushrooms tonight. I got some progress on my shelter. All in all, it's been a good day. Look, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna eat good tonight. I'm gonna save some of that broth and some little bit of what I cook tonight, I'll save for tomorrow. You can see right there. Ooh. I already got the mushrooms in there. I'm just adding those knick-knick berries. For just a little bit of sweetener to the broth. They're not very sweet, they're more of a sourish. But they'll flavor that broth a little bit. It'd be interesting. I never had it. I never tried it like this before, so we'll see. Laramie and Seven's tour has come full stop. After traveling far and wide across this burly mountain, they intend to station in this hollow stretch of valley. So now you can see on all four corners, I'll have three poles like this and I'll lash the bottom real tight. And then the top, I'll loosely lash so I can still slide stuff in, slide logs in. But that's gonna be my braces for all four corners. And then once I get it up high enough where I want it, I'll cut those off. And it should be pretty sturdy. You know, this is just a quick, way to lash all these together. If I was planning on making this like permanent, permanent, I would have notched all the logs because then you wouldn't have your gaps as bad, but you can still fill those gaps in. You know, I can chink all this with grass and pine brows and mud if it gets cold. But this is mainly just to keep a majority of the weather off me. Home can be where you make it, wherever you lay your head. A destination, an escape, a comfort to have a roof overhead, a warm spot to sleep, a place familiar to live and grow, to prove you belong. A residency doesn't need to last forever but its structure and eventual legacy 
is built one log at a time. Check out what I found. Nice little six by six bull. I'm guessing it was probably elk kill. But I grabbed the head, or it's probably a winter wolf kill. Nice little six by six bull elk. Then I grabbed the jaw bones. You can always find some kind of tool or use these for some kind of tool, whether it's a digging tool. You know, they used to use them as almost hatchets. They're great for flesh and hides. And then I also got these rib bones. What I'll do is I'll sharpen it into a point, one of these, and I'll use it for an awl to poke through my leather. Well, everybody, my first night with a roof in my little snug cabin. It's already pretty chilly, but I'm gonna climb in my sleeping bag. Dream of killing big game tomorrow. I'm hungry, tired. I desperately need a big meal. I desperately need like an entire elk backstrap or an entire bear backstrap. <laughs> Sounds amazing to me right now. Maybe some elk ribs. Ooh. As you can see, I got my nice little clothesline right there. I did not sleep at all last night. But everything is just about dry, thank goodness. I've been a gopher this morning, well, all night. Go get firewood. It took me forever to start the fire because it was still raining. It rained till about an hour and a half ago, but I got this fire going hot enough that it was able to dry while it was raining, so. Never a dull moment back here. I gotta figure out my roof today. If it rains like that again, it held for about three or four hours and it poured. And that roof held for a long time, but I think I need another layer of sod on top of it. I slept in the woods many, 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 many times, and that was one of the most miserable nights I've ever had in the woods. Just because once that roof broke, I mean, it was just like a, somebody turned a sprinkler on on me. Oh, started my gators on fire. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Just one more thing to add to today. <sighs> There's a squirrel right here. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah. That's pretty awesome right there, right out of camp. I'm going to go ahead and cook him up right now while I'm drying stuff out. You know, it's amazing how good rocks are to cook on. I mean, there's a reason you have like your your marble pans and stuff that cost a bunch of money. Take a look. You can see, come over here, got the fire underneath that. I need to put some more wood underneath it. 
And it's just heating it up. It's heating it up just like if it was a pan. Although this slice of terrain offers solid ground, nothing here or in this world is fixed. Even mountains are subtly, perpetually in motion. Well, I let Seven eat for a little while. Now he's just hanging out in his little corral. And I'm gonna go for a pretty good hike and just go hunt. I'm gonna sit a couple places, sit for a while, where I saw them whitetail crossing. See if maybe I can't get lucky, as you can tell. I got my orange on because it is rifle season. And every once in a while, there are people that get this deep in. And so I just want to make sure I'm safe because I kind of look like an elk. Same coloring. The last thing I want is somebody shooting at me. slower because I might have gotten a shot at her, but I couldn't see her because she was behind these logs. She was bedded down. She was bedded down. Right in there. And then she jumped up. She wasn't real spooked. She jumped up and just kind of trotted off over this ridge. So I'm going to ease up to that ridge real slow. See if maybe she stopped on the backside. She was bedded down in this down timber. I wish I'd have just taken it a little bit slower, because I might have gotten a shot at her. And then she jumped up. She wasn't real spooked. She jumped up and just kind of trotted off over this ridge. So I'm going to ease up to that ridge real slow, see if maybe she stopped on the backside. Sasquatch Miller is a throwback champ from another era, a creature of the past. This hunter, father, figure of the West, is a man of the mountains with a calling to fulfill. Join him on the trail. So I just jumped that deer. She was bedded down behind that log. And I followed her up her, and I'm pretty sure she didn't go very far. So I'm just going to sneak right up to this edge to where I can look over. It gets pretty steep. But I'm hoping she's just right there. saw these does in here a couple days ago and I knew if I just put time in here I'd get a shot and I hit her I think I hit her pretty good I'm pretty sure I hit her a little back though so I'm just gonna give her some time let her go lay down and die yes my belly might actually be full for the first time in a month 
I'm gonna give her a little bit. I'm gonna go track her. So you look right here. I've got pretty good blood. And it's really, really red, so that tells me it's probably liver bud. Because I know she was downhill. I hit her, you know, high angled away, so. I can almost smell a hint of gut on it, too. I'm betting what, because she was quartering away, I'm betting I hit on one of them back ribs and it clipped the front of the guts and went through, got her liver and her lungs, or at least one lung. It's definitely a killing shot. Uh oh <laughs> There she is right there. Look at her. I can't even explain to you how thankful I am for this doe. Look at her. Just beautiful. Look at that. Lots of good vittles. <sighs> Thank you, girl. Thank you. Don't worry, nothing of you will go to waste. How awesome is that? <laughs> so I could go back to camp and get seven, or I can just throw her over my shoulders and take her to camp. It's about a mile and a half straight down there. I don't feel like walking up here twice, so I'm gonna throw her over my shoulders and go. There we go. Now she'll be a backpack. Well, here I am hiking down. And guess what? I got a deer backpack. That means no more going hungry, going to bed hungry or waking up hungry. You know how excited I am for that? Oh. Pretty awesome. Survival, this deep in the wilderness, where one epic victory leads to another monumental task, demands a distinctive, eternal toughness. I'm starting to wonder how smart I am. We got a horse at camp. I should have brought him up this morning when I came, but I didn't. Good thing I'm a Sasquatch. Whew. Uh, just got back to camp with my doe. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, just put a pole here on the side. A lot of people would be worried about bears. I hope bears don't come in, but I got a horse to alert me and I'm right there. And I don't want a bear to get after my meat, so I'm gonna hang it right here close to camp. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a little cellar over here so that all the meat that I get from her, I can keep in there, keep away from birds, keep away from critters, and it can be stored in a little cellar. Then I'm gonna build me a smokehouse and I'm gonna start smoking meat. I'm gonna make jerky, I'm gonna make pemmican. But you know what I'm gonna eat tonight? I'm gonna make me a big old fat tenderloin. Maybe two of them, probably two of them. I can't tell you how thankful and excited I am to have this dough. See, I'll hang her here for a little bit. That'll help me get the hide off of her, stretch it all down, and then I can cut her up and start processing her. Tonight, I'm gonna cut out her tenderloins for dinner tonight. I'm super excited about that, too. There 
first one. Look at that yummy tenderloin. Perhaps Walt Disney was right when he said, happiness is a state of mind. So if you look here, I, I talked about making my little brick oven the other day, but I didn't show you. If you look, so I've got it on top, but if you look right down here, you see how I can feed wood into it? It goes directly underneath that rock and it heats the entire rock so it cooks evenly, so it's not just hot on one edge. And I thought of that all by myself. <laughs> you gotta improvise when you're out here. You may be a master of nothing, but you know what? I'm a master of nothing, a jack of all trades. I'll tell you what, I do wish I had some salt and pepper, a little bit of liquid smoke, or maybe some of my special seasoning I make at home for my steaks. I don't have any of that out here, so it's gonna be wood bark, sawdust, and ash. <laughs> That's my seasoning. Oh man, look at that. Yeah, buddy. Oh man. Let's see here. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, man. You know, it's amazing when you haven't, when you've been on such small rations. Normally, I'd eat two tenderloins, half a backstrap by myself. I eat two pounds of red meat, easy. I eat one and a half tenderloins and I'm full. It's raining, not very hard yet, but it's raining. I'm guessing it's probably gonna turn to snow. It can do whatever it wants, because I got food, I got my shelter, I can weather the storm. Go ahead and jerk this hide off. Throughout recorded history, humans have been utilizing animal skins as raw materials for shelter, clothing, furniture, and of course, weapons. You know, I try to go somewhat slow when I'm skinning these, just so I can keep a majority of the meat and makes my fleshing that much easier. You know, so I'm trying to keep this hide as clean as I possibly can. Converting hides and skins into valuable clothing is an old skill with various processing techniques. Despite the wonders of modern day synthetic materials, there's just no replacing fine quality leather. Animal skins are also found in foods, cosmetics, and medical prosthetics. So as you can see, I got this hide hanging up right here behind me. It's out of the rain, so it'll start drying. It's not gonna dry very fast in this moist weather, but it'll start drying. I'm gonna go ahead and cut some backstrap out, cook up breakfast. Hopefully the rain will move out so I can get to work. Either way, I got meat and lots of work in front of me, but I got meat. Typically, a hunter can yield 40 to 50 pounds of venison from an average sized doe. If you look right there, you see all that silver stuff? That's sinew. So I want to be very careful and just poke through like so. Like that. 
Just slightly tilt my knife up. Just slightly. I'm cutting into the meat, but. See? Just slightly. Like so. See, it's not real big. There's lots of places to get sinew, and I'll show you many places, but if you look, that's as good enough for now. I'll dry it out. I'm going to hang it inside my cabin and dry it out. And then when it dries, just like I was showing you with that cedar bark, you can rub these together and they'll come apart and you'll have little strands. You know, you can use them for sewing. You can use them to make bow strings. You can make cordage out of them. I mean, it, they're, it's pretty amazing and super strong. Hang it right there. Look at my hide. A coat, a rug, a blanket, or shield. Animal hides have long provided man with protection. He's never smelt meat or, I'm not sure about it. 407, he's not sure what to think about this. He, last night I had to tie him up because he was just freaking out because of the smell. I'm trying to get him close to it. You know, most horses will do exactly this if they've never been around a dead animal, the smell of blood and meat. And what I would do if I was at home, I don't want to do it out here and risk getting him hurt or something. But what I would do is if I was at home is I would literally strap it to him and let him wear it all day. He might go crazy, run around, who knows, but you strap it to him and let him get used to it because eventually he'll calm down. What is it, bud? Uh. <laughs> Calm down, it's right here. It's not gonna hurt you. So, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a bunch of logs. And if you look right here, you can see there's this dip almost a ditch and right here I'm gonna line some more rocks just right here and then I'm gonna keep stacking rocks on that and then I'm gonna get logs and put a roof over the top of it I know you guys can't really envision it right now but It'll essentially have rocks on two sides. I'm gonna lay the bottom with pine browse to keep that meat up off the ground so air can circulate. And then I'm gonna lay a, a big roof over the top that I can lift out of the way. Use some cord and tie it all together. And that's gonna be my lid. And that way I can have my meat under there. I don't gotta worry about birds getting it. I'm gonna bear if he really wants to, he can get into it, but it's gonna take him a little bit and I'll hear him. On his own, creating camp in these remote mountains, Laramie's chores never end. the natural cooling and insulating properties of the earth. He's designing a traditional root or meat cellar out of rocks, branches, and logs to store his fresh game. And now I got my cellar about halfway built. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of this deer up. I got this back strap, this fat, here's some more meat. I'm gonna start putting it all in my little cellar. So 
So I'll take meat like this, both these flank steaks, and there's a lot of fat right there. So you can see the fat that I can render down. If you look, look at how thick that fat is. I can render all that down and make oil. So I'll take all this. This is all fat too that I can render down. Another front shoulder. Look at that. Lots of good vittles there. And then I'll take this, just cut it right here. Cut the rest of the meat off of that to store it. And look, all I got is the hindquarters left. I'm gonna throw both hindquarters in there. I'll cut these legs off, stick the hindquarters in there. That way I can just cut pieces off as I go. The more I can leave it whole right now until I get them cut, the more meat I'll save. If you look underneath there, you'll see how I've got it all spread apart. Nothing laying on top of each other. Let me go ahead and put the back strap right here in this, because that'll be the first to get eaten. And then I'll put pine brows on top of here and I'm gonna line rocks right here and cover all this up. So the only way to access this meat will be from the top. You know, if you notice, there's nothing left. I used every bit. There's gonna be a little bit of spine is the only thing I'm not gonna use. So, that's the way it should always be done. Trying to dry out a little bit. It's tough raining for a little bit. You can see I'm drying my hat and my stuff out. Have me my nice little cellar. I've got my meat stash. I got all the pine brows on the bottom. That way it keeps it up off the ground, keeps air circulating through that meat. I'm gonna put pine brows on top to try to keep as much moisture off it as I can and you know just to help conceal it a little bit. It'll help keep some of the sand in. But first thing in the morning, I'm gonna build that smokehouse, get a fire started in it, and start smoking meat. Well, good morning, everybody. I've been laying here for about two hours. It's been raining off and on all morning. I would rather see snow, I think, than rain, but hey. Either way, I got venison outside that I gotta take care of. Got a lot of work to do today, so I'm hoping this rain stops. Probably cook me some ribs for lunch. Ooh, 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 ooh. At least I stayed dry. My roof's holding, it's a good thing. Sasquatch Miller is a throwback champ from another era, a creature of the past. This hunter, father, figure of the West, is a man of the mountains with a calling to fulfill. Join him on the trail. my cellar all built. This should keep critters out of there. Like I said before, if a bear decides to come in, I got a tag for him too, so he better watch his butt. But it'll keep most everything else out. And I laid them brows on the bottom so that that meat can get up off the ground. So the circulation all the way around it. I'm gonna cook these ribs up for dinner. I think what I'm gonna do is see, I stacked a couple of rocks higher on these two sides. I'm gonna go cut willow branches and I'm gonna cut thick ones. 
and I'm gonna lay them right there and then I can lay the ribs right on top and slow roast them for an hour or two. If you look, I wanna get straight ones. So this one right here will work. One. Ah, let's go check it out. One like so. One like so. Oh yeah. It's gonna work perfect. I'm gonna go wash this off. Washer off real good. It's good enough, the rest of it will all burn off. Look at that. Oh, ribs. Oh, yeah. So when you're out in the mountains, you know, there's not very much wood to choose from. You got pine, fir. Here I'm fortunate. I do have a little bit of cedar and juniper, but that's gonna be better for when I build my smoker. I'll put some in there, but we're not fortunate. We don't have any hardwood but I'll take the mountains over having hardwoods any day. What the mountains do provide is all that Laramie needs right now. Mountains can resemble mirrors, showing us meanings to the life we've committed to see, echoing our finest calls, listening to our deepest thoughts a reflection in a solely individual way. Man, I tell you what, if these ribs taste half as good as they look. Oh. Oh. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Mm-hmm. All fatty. Mm. You know, that fat right there is what I really need. It help give me more energy. Without fat, you can't survive. Mm. I can tell you what. Those are the best venison ribs I've ever had. She's so fat. She's got fat between layers of meat. Makes it amazing. Look, I flipped it over because I'm cooking the next fat layer. But man, that's just what the doctor ordered. I needed fat. Oh, it's like my body's craving it. for today. I need to get my smokehouse built so I can start smoking meat and then start flushing and preparing that hide to tan it. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a lot of work. So, it's time to build my smokehouse. And I've been debating where to put it. I think I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna dig down, make it flat right there, and then I'm gonna put three sides on it. So there'll be three sides of rock up to about, oh, so high. So it'll look like a three-sided chimney. And then I'll have a couple slots in it about three foot high and then at the top. And then that's where I'll hang my meat. And then I can just put some pine browse over the top to keep the smoke in there. Build my fire in the bottom. It'll smoke and dry that meat. You don't want to cook the meat. 
because when you cook the meat, then bacteria can get in, but you want to dry it. So you don't want it to ever get above like 150 degrees. So it's got to be fairly tall. And I'll use, there's a bunch of juniper and cedar branches that are dead that I'll grab some of that, I'll use that as wood. But first of all, I got to go gather a bunch of rocks. That's why I've been waiting. <laughs> but might as well get to it. First things first is I'm gonna dig this out to where it's flat. So I think right here, so essentially right here is where my fire's gonna be and I'll build rocks up on the back side, this side and this side. This side will be open for the most part. You want a little bit of air to get through. I don't want it to get a lot of air because you want it to smoke, not burn really hot. He's right here. This is where my fire's gonna be. Now I need to go gather a bunch of rocks. When I say a bunch of rocks, a bunch of rocks, because like I said, it needs to be about four foot tall. Although hardwood is scarce in this neck of the frontier, there's plenty of hard rock to construct a meat smoker. Stone and fire have combined to preserve meat and game since the beginning of time. A method from our ancestors to survive winters and long journeys. So it's about tall enough to where I want to put my first strand of Willows right there to hang meat on. Good. Let's put these like so. Probably do three. And then I'm gonna stack rocks about this high, put another layer on there. Time, a thing we share that's limited. Its value measured by how it's spent. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cover this top with pine browse, start my fire down here, and it'll just smoke all the meat I hang off of this. So that's the plan anyway. I could have just built it out of wood, but I'm getting sick and tired of cutting wood with a little handsaw. But I think it might've been easier than using rocks. All right, so now I got that all built, got a fire started. I'm gonna get a bunch of these juniper branches. Good luck. These are all juniper branches that I can take and they'll add just a little different flavor than pine wood. A little better flavor actually so I'm not gonna need a ton but uh, at least get them over there to get them starting to dry out. Look, I already cut this yesterday. I'm just gonna take that. I got it all in little strips. You know, there's numerous different ways to dry this meat out. Obviously, if it was summer, you could literally set it out and let the wind and the cool air or the warm air dried out. But, being it's about 35 degrees, you know, and the whole thing when you're cutting this, I'm sure a lot of you have made jerky, but you just wanna cut it real thin. And I'm gonna make sure and save all this fat and tendony stuff, because I'm gonna render all that down into oil. Oh, I could smell, you know, just the difference in that juniper smoking compared to the pine. It'll add a completely different taste to that meat. Now I'll leave that all day probably. It takes a long time to smoke meat. I'll probably leave that all day. I'll get my hide. 
Here's my sinew. Remember, I got my sinew off. You know, it's just so wet out still, it hasn't dried completely. You look, it still hasn't dried all the way, but it's getting there. I think maybe by the end of the day, it'll be ready to break apart and then I can start making thread or whatever I need out of it. You know, this hide, you can see this hide where I started flushing it. You know, I gotta get all this stuff off. You gotta get it all the way down to the membrane. You see all them blood vessels? I gotta scrape all them off too. You know, flushing is probably the most tedious job. But it's probably the most important because if you don't get all this fat and gristle and extra stuff off, then guess what? Your hide's not gonna be worth a day. Because the brain's never gonna get the chance to soak in. You know, the Native Americans, they used to use anything from jaw bones to flint knives to their teeth. I mean, they would do all kinds of stuff. There's stories, you know, of tanning where you know, the Native American women, because they were predominantly the ones that did it, where they would put their kids in that hide once they applied the brain and toss their kids up and down to stretch that hide. You know, so that that brain would penetrate that much better. You know, they used whatever they could, they had to. They didn't have any other choice. You know, they couldn't run to town, kind of like me right now. I can't run to my house and go get my fleshing beam or all of my fleshing tools. <laughs> Gotta make do with what we got out here. So I just draped that hide over my little smokehouse just to help it dry just a little bit. I don't want it to dry too much, but if it dries just a little bit, it'll help me scrape all that stuff off a little easier. Like I said, time consuming. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab my dough head out. Need to perform some surgery. She's got a brain tumor. I need to get her brain out. A deer's brain, if it was all circular, would be about the size of probably a softball. So, you know, the old Indian tell is that every animal has enough brain to tan its own hide. I know brains look kind of gross, but guess what? This right here is mountain man gold because for tanning hides, for any kind of skin elements, or if you have really dry skin, this brain right here is amazing. So I got my water. You wanna put your brains in it and you wanna get this lukewarm. You don't want it hot to where it cooks brains, but you want it warm enough. And I'm just gonna smash that up with my hands. And the ratio is about, for a deer brain, is about three quarters of a gallon of water which this pot is probably right around there. So I'm gonna cover this, let it sit for about 10 minutes close to the fire so it warms up. Then that mixture will be ready to uh, put on my hide and I'll make sure and rub it in real good on the hide. And then I'm gonna roll that hide up and let it sit overnight. If you look, you can see how it's getting kind of white. You see all this, this white looking stuff here? You can kind of see it. 
that's what you, you're trying to get down to. You know, the rest of the, it, the hide's gonna dry in different increments because it's different thicknesses. So you just gotta make sure you cover the whole hide every time and keep working it. Like I said, you can never apply too much brain. I warmed my brain up again this morning. It always makes me giggle when I say stuff like that. I warmed my brain up this morning. Like this. You know, and there's always, so like right now, I've got some, some harder spots on the edges here which that's gonna happen because you can't work those edges as well as you can a lot of this other stuff. So, I just wanna make sure to get it real good, all nice and soaked with rain. And when you start tanning, you can really see the blemishes when you're skinning, I got careless. I got a couple of cuts. Well, they get bigger when you start tanning. Once I get done tanning, then I can sew those up. If I was gonna use this for buckskins or something like that, then I would sew it up. Of course, I would have this backside taken off. You know, there's a lot of ways too to take off the back with the hair. You know, you can soak it in ash. If you put it in water and ash, and soak it in there for a day or so, that hair will slough off. You can also dry scrape it, which is getting a sharp scraper, and you just scrape the backside of that hide to get all that hair off. As the wind, rain, and snow transform mountains over time, the landscape gradually changes. You know, as I look at this, starting to wind down, but I'm so thankful for this opportunity to get back to the old me. You know, I think we let life get in the way of what makes us us. And all the way down to the core at heart, I am a mountain man. I can't live without these mountains. I'm not the same person. Being able to come back here and reconnect, spend some time, get some solitude, talk to the man upstairs, I couldn't be more thankful. I had some rough times. <laughs> you know, it wasn't easy, but I made it through and now I'm, I'm a way better person coming out than I was going in. And that means a lot to me. Everybody has their niche and everybody has what makes them go and what touches their soul. The mountains are that for me. I am a modern day mountain man. I am modern day Jeremiah Johnson. You know what else is on my agenda? Which is on my agenda every single day? Just cutting firewood. I need enough firewood to last tonight and in the morning before I leave. That's over half of what I do is cut firewood. But granted, I've been smoking meat and had, had to have a fire going pretty much all the time, so I need a lot of firewood. It's kind of warm this morning. Makes me think we got rain coming in. You can see the clouds starting to form. ready for a sunny day. I haven't had a sunny day for a while. 
You know, last couple days I've been thinking back and reflecting on this trip because it's coming to a close and how thankful I am for the opportunity and for the lifestyle that I live. And it's not an easy lifestyle. It's not a lifestyle that's gonna make you rich. Unless your riches are experiences and solitude. <laughs> and after being in here and living off the land and getting closer to mother nature and the man upstairs, My glass is full. Laramie Sasquatch Miller is a throwback champ from another era, a creature of the past. This hunter, father, figure of the West, is a man of the mountains with a calling to fulfill. Join him on the trail. She's standing there about 20 yards, 15 yards. But guess what? I've been blessed. I have plenty of meat. It's the last thing. I, I don't need another hide to deal with. I don't need more meat to deal with right now. I'm going to take care of what I have. Now, if I was staying here for the winter, you're dang straight. I'd have shot her and had another doe to deal with. Look at Seven, he ain't quite sure. She blew at him. He's not quite sure about it. I don't know if he's ever heard a whitetail blow at him. Good watchdog. Seven's grown up a lot on this trip. He saw moose for the first time, heard wolves howl for the first time, smelled bears for the first time, smelled meat for the first time. Look at him. He's on red alert over whitetail does. Solitary experiences, for all their natural rewards, involve risk. For loved ones both near and far, an inner trust is necessary to steer yourself safely along the roads less traveled, avoiding the hazards of life's trail. It's definitely a weird feeling just going into town, grabbing coffee, running to the store, going shopping, and not knowing what, you know, Laramie's doing. He's just out there in the mountains somewhere. He can't just get anything he needs at all living off the land. I've tried to stay positive this whole time, but you can't help but get anxious about it. Which I'm sure he would, well, he'd be probably a lot more anxious if it was me out there, because I don't have the survival skills. <laughs> but, like, vice versa. Whenever your significant other's in a uncomfortable or stressful situation, you're gonna be stressed out for them. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut a bunch of fat. I've already got a bunch of fat cut off of those quarters and fat that I've saved. But I'm gonna cut some and take a bunch of it over there and render it down so that I can pour it on my pemmican, make a little oil. So, 
All this right here is fat. That, that, I'll cut the little bit of meat off of it. I got all this fat right here. Take all this and I cut the little bitty little pieces of meat that are on there. I'll cut those off and heck, I'll go ahead and cook them up right now. Little jerky slivers. So all these pieces like this, those pieces are ready. I'm gonna set these on this lid for now. That's all fat. You know, I'll just make little jerky pieces out of all these. Even if it's got a little fat on it, it'd be all right. Just real thin. I'm not cooking them slow. Now, on all this fat, most people just throw away. And it's an amazing resource, honestly. Then I don't want to set it directly on the fire. I want it to slowly cook. So we'll set it right over here. And then throughout the afternoon, I'll just check it that it's just going to keep rendering down. So all it is is it's melting all that fat into oil. You know, and then I can, uh, if I had some cheese cloth or something, I would sift it. I don't have anything to sift it, so I'll just have to bear with it and try to get the other pieces out once it cools. But when it cools, it's gonna be like a lard. And this is just part of the fat off that. You can see there's little pieces of meat, but most of it's just straight fat. And let's leave it in there. I'll leave it in there and let it render down. It'll probably take an hour or so, maybe more. Render her down and then I'll be able to pour it over my smashed up meat and my berries. And then I'll have pemmican. Mountain Man Trail Mix. I have my little matate right here. Get my and I'll just take my pieces of dried meat. You see my pieces of dried meat? Mm -hmm. And then I'll take all this stuff. You see how it just shreds really easy once you grind it up like that? Just take a bunch of this and start putting it in my bag. Okay, look in there. Got a lot to do. You know, this is the way a lot of your Native American tribes you know, later on when they started farming a little bit and they had corn and they had you know, they pick all the seeds off the top of the grasses and stuff like that. Well, then they would take it to a stone like this and they would grind it all up as fine as they could. And that's how they would make their flour and then they could make bread and stuff like that. You know, and sure, I could take my knife and cut all this up, but it's not gonna mash it and make it fray like this. You know, you want it kind of mashed so when you pour that fat on it, that fat soaks into the meat every little bit. The original trail food, pemmican, consists of lean venison or buffalo meat mixed with fat. Native American recipes incorporate dried berries and nuts for added flavor and nutrition. Pemmican was a vital meal for ancient hunters, trappers, and explorers. So I pulled it off. 
I'm gonna let it cool real good. And as soon as it's cool enough for me to reach in there and grab them pieces of fat out, then I can take that, pour it into my pouch on top of all the meat and berries. And guess what? I'll have pemmican. I'll have a meal handy whenever I need it. You can see right there. And I'm gonna drizzle this fat that's in here, I'm gonna drizzle it all over that. That's probably enough. There we go, that's perfect. Now you look and it's a completely different look. You know, you got all that fat thickens up and there's your pemmican. Look at it in there. Mm -mm -mm. Sometimes we let life get in the way of what makes us us. Everybody has their niche. Everybody has what makes them go, what touches their soul. And the mountains are that for Laramie. As I sit here on my last night, daylight slowly fading away, reflecting on this whole trip, man. You know, on one hand, it feels like it's been forever. But on another hand, it flew by. And I feel like I haven't seen my family for a long time. Been fun, been real. I wanted to come out and test myself. I think I did pretty good. I struggled at times. But at the end of the day, I made it through and I'm going out heavier than I came in, pack-wise. Got a nice hide for Faye. Be a nice little rug for her to crawl around on. I got some meat. And lots of memories. I didn't turn into bear poop. That's always a plus. Seven came a long way. It's raining off and on, of course, Mother Nature sending me off, making my last night beautiful. Been wet most of the trip, might as well stay wet, I guess. <laughs> breakfast. I just cut me four pieces off of a quarter. Now I'm going to build the fire up underneath my rock. Just little thin steaks. That's all I need for breakfast. I'll have my pemmican for lunch. And then I'll have a big dinner. Ah. Well, seeing how it's not raining anymore. I just, this hide's got a little bit of drying to do. I need to keep stretching it a little bit, but it is pretty much done. Just in time. You can see it's still, still somewhat wet. I'm gonna hang it up over here while I'm packing up camp. And then I'll use this to roll some stuff in once it dries out, but my hide is pretty much done. did without daddy yeah. and now we're here to pick them up it does not it does not feel real like it does not feel real 
that we're actually gonna get to see him and hug him, huh? I brought him water and a change of clothes and some muffins. And I know we're going out for a big steak dinner. So we are so excited. Huh, are you excited? Are you excited? His shelter where he was is still like five or six miles from here. And we had to take the freaking off-road Jeep to even get here. For, and it was like an off-road trek for an hour. So he's way out there, huh? Daddy's way out there. <sighs> I don't know how he made it out here <laughs> for 30 days. It's been like 20 minutes and I'm freezing. Huh, are you cold? Munchkin! Munchkin! What is he doing? Huh? What is he doing? How is he? Oh my gosh. What are you getting scared about? What is he doing? Huh? Did you forget me? Did you forget me? Did you. Did you forget me? <laughs> huh? <laughs> See, Come here. He looks skinnier. <sighs> Whoa, Dad, you stink. <laughs> huh? She Does said daddy you stink? smell different and you look Does skinnier. Does Daddy stink? Does Daddy stink? <laughs> look at you, you're spitting up everywhere. You got excited? <sighs> Let me get him unloaded, get him in the trailer, and I'm ready to go take a bath or a shower and poop on a real toilet. Laramie Miller began his journey in search of himself to test his skills as a true mountain man. Beginning, the journey was fruitful. Food and shelter came easy. Yeah, but oh! <laughs> but the threat of wolves forced him and his young horse Seven to find a new camp. Four or five inches of snow, maybe more. I don't want to get snowed in up here. <laughs> oh boy. The elements set in, and challenges arose. Could be worse. He could have broke his leg, but I mean, it feels like it's in the single digits, but I don't know what it is. But the modern day Jeremiah Johnson held strong, hungry, but motivated. How can you hike through the woods as much as I have and not even see a squirrel? Tired, but hopeful, his skills kept him alive. <laughs> Holy smokes. I'm starving in this right here? Oh, it's gonna be amazing. After battling white death, he found his eventual safe haven and got to work. Oh. Look at that. Mm -hmm. mm. In the end, he proved to himself that he can endure the hardships that his ancestors faced. The rugged Sasquatch returned a better man, but with the same spirit he left with. <laughs>